This is an interview with Emma Glenz, E-M-M-A-G-L-E-N-Z, as part of the Oral History Project for Historic Madison. This is July 27, 1982. Emma, uh, can you tell me where you were born and raised? I was born in Madison and raised here. In what part of the city? Um, what was called Canal Street years ago. Oh, where it's is that? It's still there. It extends from Main Street down to King. Very old part of town. How large was uh, Madison at that time? Probably about 10,000. Oh, 10,000. And so you were pretty near the center of town at that time. When it was about 17,000, I was in high school. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. and 17 did you, to 20,000. Did you know, were you able to uh, know the whole city then? You could get around and see. Oh, you know. we all knew the square mm -hmm. and uh, some of the outlying parks. The Germans had a park called Schutzen Park, pronounced Schutzen Park. How do you spell that? S C H U E T Z E N. Mm -hmm. And they had picnics there. And my father belonged to the Turnverein at Minnacor, so he used to go to picnics there. Was that near the square? That that was out in the neighborhood of Olvish Park now. Oh yes, uh -huh. around the lake then mm -hmm. from you, around Monona. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what did your father do? My father was in the insurance department as a mailing clerk. I think that was his work for 40 years. When he died, he was the oldest employee in the state. Oh, interesting. 40 years. Oh. And your mother stayed at home and took care of the children? Mother, mother, um, yeah, she was a homemaker, wonderful cook. German? Uh, she learned German cooking from my grandmother, who lived with us twice at different times, and they owned a hotel in Germany, really two hotels, mm -hmm. so the she Adler and the Schützenhof, which are still there. And uh, uh, what was your family like? You had brothers and sisters? My parents had five children, a, a brother, sister, Brother was ten, sister was eight. eight. My brother, I'll say, was ten, my sister, two years younger. Then a baby was almost stillborn, just lived a day. And then a little sister, two years older than I. But she died of diphtheria mm. about 1890, when she was nine. Mm. We all had it. But she died of it. Mm, that was so common in those days, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Uh, when the blue sign was on the doors, we children would go across the. We were scared of it, and oh. scarlet fever mm -hmm. sign. Mm -hmm. All children were scared oh. of it. <clears throat> I remember having uh, scarlet fever signs on doors, but we didn't. In my day, we didn't have diphtheria. But well, what year were you born then? I was born 1883, September 6th. Oh, that is really remarkable. So in this fall, at sep in September, I'll be 99. Are you the oldest citizen in Madison now, do you think? I hear of older people, do you? over 100. Oh. I don't know who they are. Well, I bet they're not getting around and giving interviews <laughs> anyway. Um, what, what was your uh, home like? What kind of house did you have in what neighborhood? Well, um, we, we didn't own a home till later, till later years, we always rented. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father was quite artistic. Even though it was humble, he always made it very art attractive. Mm -hmm. And we lived, when we moved from Canal Street, we lived on West Wilson, uh, but that house had been torn down. And then we moved to North Hamilton to live there many years, all through my high school years. Then mother was so anxious to have a home of her own. My mm -hmm. brother and father bought a house across from the Lincoln Center. And mm -hmm. we lived there 
eight years till my brother was married. Then my father and mother bought a house on Livingston, and I lived with them 18 years till they died. You were always very close to the lakes then, weren't you? Yes. Did you use the lakes? My my uh, sister and her husband uh, built a house on um, East Gorham, right on the lake, mm -hmm. and my brother and Dr. Gilbert owned a launch, so we were on the lake quite a lot. Did you swim too? My brother used to duck me, so I never <laughs> learned to swim well. <laughs> but in the hot weather, I presume oh, yes, they, people did go to the beaches. The, the Gilbert children and the Kubli children and deans in that block all had an instructor from the Turnverein, and they all learned to be fine swimmers. Oh, uh -huh. You I, were friends of the Kublis and the deans? Yes, and uh -huh. that block where the Dr. Gilbert, my sister, lived, um, there were the Kessnicks, Collins, Kublis, Wiedenbecks, deans. Mm -hmm. Those are so familiar I knew names. All of them. Mm -hmm. The houses are nearly all there. The beautiful dean house was torn down in one day. Oh yes, they really go, don't they? Well, are any of those um, people still living that you knew then? Aren't there some Kublis, that, some rather elderly Kublis now? Oh, uh, Professor Harold Kubli oh. is, of course, much younger than I. Mm -hmm. He's living. He married mm -hmm. a Herfeth girl. And uh, let's see, Stan Kubli is living. He he ran the business mm -hmm. till he was till he retired. Uh, the Kessnicks, just the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Someone mentioned that there was um, a Kubli, um, I think probably Stan Kubli, who might also have early yeah. recogni and recollections. And of the Wiedenbecks, Mrs. Moore and Emily and Margaret are all living. Margaret is in the high 80s. Oh. And, mm -hmm. uh, her is she in good health? They, they are living on the Midtown Road, a beautiful valley between Madison and Verona. Oh. The three sisters mm -hmm. in three houses about a block apart. Oh, we're very interested in getting, in hearing from people we talk yeah. to about others we might talk to, so that'll we were, be a really good reference. Mrs. Moore and I were <clears throat> talking about our youth one day last year, and we always talked German at home, oh, all of did. us talk German and they always talk German I didn't know that till World War one then the father came home one day and he said we may no longer talk German mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. during the war I see did you have relatives nearby uh, yes uh, the Kaiser my mother was Julia Kaiser how and do you spell Adolf that Kaiser former mayor of mm -hmm. Madison was her Is youngest that brother. K A Y S E R? S E R. Mm -hmm. So you had some cousins and, yes. and uh, uncles and things Stella, around. Stella, Helen, Paul, Mrs. Anna King, Mrs. Vera Blatt, mm -hmm. and uh, did I didn't mention Esther Kesnick. She was a relative? Yeah, they, yes. Oh. They were, I think I mentioned all the children. So it was quite a large German community. Uh, Helen, did I mention Helen? She was assistant dean of women. Helen Kaiser. Kaiser, oh. And, and Stella was very active in music. She at one time was president of the Madison Music Association. Mm -hmm. Very well-known piano teacher. Oh. So you, uh, this was a, was it a sort of a German community? Yes, um, there was the Madison Turnverein, mm -hmm. and the Turner Hall is still on North Butler. Butler, that's and, right. And um, mm -hmm. we we went to turning school, oh. and they still have a turning school. What is that turning school? Uh, it was gymnastics. Oh yes, uh huh. And uh, and then the German community had a theater group, and uh, the manicure corps all so met there. Mm -hmm. Still and my does. father was stage manager and they put on very good things like Schiller's Maria Stewart. In German? In German. Oh. And um, 
when the theater on the square burned, the fine companies, road companies, came to the Turner Hall. Oh, and Julia Marlowe was there, and my father helped lace up her bodice. Oh, what a wonderful memory. And then they, they stood at the curtain together and looked through the peephole, and Julia Marlowe said, what a poor house. Oh. And my father said, well, when you, you'll be known better after tonight, <laughs> then it'll be more profitable for you. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, that's, there was also uh, an Italian community, wasn't there, on another, yes. over I never near got Vilas Park? acquainted with oh. them. Mm -hmm. That was a different part of town. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think the Germans were in the main city, quite, but scattered. It sounds that way. There was a German congregation formed. 1863, the church was built. The second oldest, my Holy Redeemer, and my brother and sister, many, most Catholic children attended that. And my little sister that died and I attended it till she until after her death. Mm -hmm. We walked from Wilson Street way across the city, oh, two little goodness. girls. Mm -hmm. And one day the old priest who married my parents, my father was Lutheran, mother Catholic. Oh. He stopped us one day and talked to us. I remember that so well, <laughs> white-haired old gentleman. And she was, Augusta was always so quiet. Oh. I did all the talking. Was, were there um, sidewalks then? I've wooden seen pictures of sidewalks, wooden sidewalks, sidewalks, and the streets were dirt. Hmm. Then my father thought it was too difficult for me to go as a little girl, seven, alone. Mm -hmm. So I went into the Doty School, and that's still, that's just going to be changed into condominiums. Oh my goodness. I think it's the same building. Yes, I, well, I think they probably will tear a lot of it down to make the, the condominiums. The Follets lived across the street. Oh, did they? <clears throat> I knew Fola when she was a little girl. Mm -hmm. Well, you started out, um, what what age were you when you started to school? I must have been six. Six. And was there a kindergarten then? The, mm -hmm. the um, no. I think that we met in the basement of the church, and after a number of years, the school, which is still there, mm -hmm. but is not used as school, uh, was built, and um, then after my first communion, I pardon me, I went to to public school at Doty mm -hmm. till through the. I skipped the second grade and into the third grade, and Blanche Harper, Dr. Cornelius Harper's sister, was my third grade teacher. Oh. But you started as a as a first grader at at Holy Redeemer yes, Church, yes. And you said that was taught in German. Yes, most of it. Mm. Of course, the catechism and Bible stories mm -hmm. and so forth. But you were speaking English at that time, uh, yes. as well as German. But I was till quite late. I had quite a German accent. Uh -huh. Well, I think you've lost it now. <laughs> um, how large a uh, class did you have at that? Would you say in the in the grade at Doty in the Spurns class, um, it was a, a full room. Mm -hmm. I'll say about maybe thirty, oh, thirty-five oh. children. And one day she said, "Just look when I came after I came from home. Just look at Emma. How quietly she sits there with her hands full, while you children aren't doing our our." rowdy, <laughs> noisy, and um, when I left Miss Blanche's school, third grade, she let me draw all over the board. Oh. So I must have had talent as a child yes, and you, to draw. You must have been very smart to skip a grade, too. Then, so. then I went to, we moved in this neighborhood, I went to Lincoln, oh. old Lincoln, I mm -hmm. think it was, and I had Miss Herfeth for my teacher. And then I went back to Holy Redeemer for three years to make my first Holy Communion and was confirmed. Then I You went, mean you had to go to classes there? Um, I or? went permanently. Oh. 
and and then I the uh, Notre Dame sisters taught. Then I I went back to public school, seventh oh. and eighth grade. I see at Lincoln again. I no, I graduated from Brayton oh. High School. Well, eighth grade was. I uh, had a teacher. I always remember her name, E. May Clark. Uh -huh. She was so lovely, and I can just see her. And uh, well, let me get this straight now. You went. Where did you go to seventh and eighth grade? That was still grade school then. Yes, I went to public school. Public school. Seventh and eighth. Uh huh. And that was in. Uh, that was at Lincoln School, or did you say Brayton? Brayton. Brayton. Yeah, that Brayton. school is no it longer was, there, is I it? I can't exactly remember, but I think it was near East Washington Avenue. I see. Now, Doty must have been a fairly new school when you went there, yes. wasn't it? Uh -huh. And Lincoln was... They uh, looked rather old. Oh, they did? Uh -huh. Oh, those, so. some of those schools. Mm -hmm. They were torn down. And there, was, there were uh, all... Do you remember whether there were just sixth grades or were they, did they go up to eighth grades? through eighth grade. Yes, I can't get used to the way the grades are now mm -hmm. in high school. We went through eighth grade into high school. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that was that way in, for a long central. time. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, so you had a really fairly modern school. It was a city school and, and uh, had you didn't have the kind of problems that the people out in the country no. have, had. And no discipline like no. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Was Dudgeon a, was superintendent of schools. Oh, was he? And you had a principal, I suppose, too, of the school. I think Miss Clark was the principal, oh, the uh -huh. eighth grade teacher. Uh -huh. That sounds reasonable. And you had sort of an equal mix of boys and girls? Yes. There was no separation. Uh, Oscar there. Jensen, who ran the college bookstore, was in my eighth grade. Oh, is that right? He always remembers me. He <laughs> died a couple years ago. Oh. I used to see him at his home. Oh, that would be fun. Uh, you had the regular um, course of uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic, plus apparently you had some artwork and I presume some music. And yeah. Did you I, have the spelling bees? I never bees? was too good in math. Oh. <laughs> but in high school I got good grades in chemistry mm -hmm. and algebra, but it was difficult for me. Do you remember the um, um, spelling bees? That no, I don't Or Christmas remember programs? That. I presume I you had. I remember those. getting a badge in uh, multiplication and subtraction in third grade, and we wore little ribbons. <laughs> what did you? What were? Um, what was the common dress for going to school in those days? I can't remember, dear. You probably wore. Um, not many clothes. Not at least I didn't have mm -hmm, many mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. My my mother told of having a basic. Um, long-sleeved sort of woolen dress and then pinafore she used to, mm -hmm. um, fresh pinafore she'd wear on. I remember one dress I had with a deep lace collar. But that was probably a dressy uh, one, wasn't it? Probably didn't wear that to school. And, uh, and I suppose you had high button shoes and... Yes, and, and then um, be very difficult when they snapped off. <laughs> you'd have to take them to the shoe store to have them put back and when you were late mornings to get those all buttoned, you know, oh, yes. that was difficult. We had button hooks. I still have one. I have one, too. And and you wore long hair, I presume, with a ribbon. And, yes. And uh, do you, I suppose there wasn't... I wore long hair through my first year at the university. Oh. Did you have braids? Tied it back. Oh, uh-huh. I never had luxuriant hair like my mother. She had a big braid when she died, mm -hmm. about 18 inches long, mm -hmm. and when she was married it was like a crown over oh. around her head. Oh, that was a very common style, wasn't it, especially yes. for Germans like then? Elizabeth of Austria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was hard work to wash hair in those days, Yes, I re imagine. We didn't have the shampoos like them. Mm -hmm. use Some regular people soap. beat eggs and use eggs, <laughs> egg shampoo. And I suppose you brushed your hair every night like they yes, uh, advocated. Yes, I brush my mother's hair for Oh, how nice. Well, you walked to school then, obviously, because you lived close by. Yes. And you went for the usual term, summer, I mean, end of summer to, to um, June. I walked 
to and from the university one whole year through oh. rain and shine mm. from the uh, 700 block on East Gorham. Now you, there were streetcars then, weren't there? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you walked anyway. Well, a friend of you. mine lived there and we decided to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the secret of your long life, I imagine, all that walking you did then. <laughs> um, well, let's um, take you into high school now. You were living on, on East Gorham. No, I was living on North Hamilton. North Hamilton, North right. Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And oh. we moved to East Gorham during my university, the last year, mm -hmm. I think, about 1907 along there. I got my master's in 1908. Oh, you did? In oh. German. Well, you you said you went to Central High. Yes. Right, and you lived on North Hamilton, so that isn't a long, terribly long walk. That was a lovely time of my life. Was it? Central. There was some dis... Oh, I was going to write an essay called, We Weren't Angels Either. <laughs> and I sent it into uh, this... Mr. Professor Guard's mm -hmm. project, mm -hmm. but they, they didn't accept it. Maybe the kids act too badly. We used <laughs> to act very badly in study periods. Oh, did you? We had a large auditorium, and mm -hmm. everybody met there all the four years. And then we'd go to classes from there. And there was an aisle through it, and big open registers, and in winter the girls would stand there to get warmed and our skirts would flare. <laughs> and oh. and you were, did, you were supposed to study in there, but you did a lot of other things. We passed notes, the girls, and the boys were very bad, some of them. They would spit spitballs. People would go through to the library, which is in the front part of it. The, they'd keep a beat keep in touch with them so oh. it sounded just like piano playing when the <laughs> seeds falling. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Oh, it was terrible oh. for the teachers that were in charge. One teacher wept one time mm. and we used to say, will you be in her room during the study period? We'd just love to be in there to see what would happen. And then they'd roll marbles to the front and they'd come back and was really bad. Were they? But nothing mean. Oh, it was. No, it was just fun. No meanness like now. But were they able to? Um, the teacher able to send these uh, to the principal. bad boys to the yes. principal's office. They yes. got to out of hand. Well, that is a problem with a lot, a large study hall with many children. And um, was central. An, a fairly new school when you started going, or had it been built quite a while before? I think that I went to the old school for a year or two, and it faced Dayton's, it faced the Presbyterian Church, because we used to study on the Presbyterian Church steps. Mm -hmm. I had a friend, Mabel Davidson, she was Governor Davidson, so she was in my German class, and German was very easy for me. I would Always think got so. A's. <laughs> and so uh, I used to help her and work with her. And I remember sitting there with her. And that was a, a wooden school, and then that was torn I down? I think it was a s s sandstone. There's oh. so much sandstone mm -hmm. found around Madison, mm -hmm. and I think it was. And then we went to the Carnegie Library on Carroll Street for some of our work. Was that already there at that, that time? That was torn down and is now the parking lot. Yes, I, I remember it. I used to go there, but I, I had no idea when it was built. So it was already there. Carnegie gave his money for those libraries in yes. about 1900. It was built at the turn of the century, because mm -hmm. I graduated from high school in 1902. Oh. So it was already there at that yes, time, uh -huh. with a little Peter Pan statue. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was outdoors. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then they built the new uh, Central High, and it was it the high school for all of Madison, or were there yes. others? Mm -hmm. So you knew everyone in town at that mm -hmm. time would come there. And you had, um, what course did you take? 
Well, my eighth grade teacher told me to take the, the um, Latin course. Um, I that asked her, I, I wanted one day Professor Fuss of the German department, who was a friend of our family, met my father and he said, how's Emma, what's she going to do? And my dad said, she wants to be a German teacher. Is she studying Latin? He said, no, because he didn't think I should take Latin. He interfered. And so he said, you better get busy, she better get busy. So I took it extra for two years, which was difficult, because his interfering, I, uh, because of that, I went into the science course and made it difficult for oh, me. Mm -hmm. He meant well, mm -hmm. but... Oh, of course, and how do you know with your children? <laughs> just don't understand some mm -hmm. of these mm -hmm. requirements. So, um, and this was college uh, preparatory then? Yes. Of course. You expected I, I to go on to school. I especially loved history. I took English history from Miss um, Murphy. She was the aunt of Robert Murphy, attorney here. And, mm -hmm. uh, and Eng I said English and medieval history. And I happened to open a diary I kept through all those years. and. One day we had company, and Miss Murphy, of course, wanted to show us off a little, you know, and she said, can anyone tell the migration of the nations? So I held up my hand, and she said, Emma, you may tell it. And so I went all through it, and uh, from the a Asia through England, you know, through my the Celts. And, so. and as I passed her table, she said, Good girl, Emma. <laughs> I had that in my diary, and that pleased me oh, so. Yes. I was very fond of her. She was a wonderful teacher. And our English teacher, Shakespeare, was considered the finest Shakespeare teacher in the state, Miss mm -hmm. McGovern, Mary McGovern. Oh. And I took physics from a Mr. Stengel, and um, oh, uh, elocution. Oh, yes. <laughs> from a uh, um, Miss. She married a Mr. Steensland. I can't think of her name. She was so pretty, and she had gorgeous golden hair. And they lived across from us on Webster Street when we lived on Hamilton. And when she'd come home, she'd take down her hair, and it was way below her waist, mm -hmm. a big braid mm -hmm. way below her. I suppose she got headaches, you know. <laughs> we were very cruel to her in her class the children, they didn't mean to be cruel, just mischievous, mm -hmm. you know, made life hard for her. Did you learn all those studied gestures like, you know, despair and uh, We We used that. to have calisthenics rising on our toes oh. and breathing. Mm -hmm. And then she coached me in, uh, for the auditorium, I, I read a poem by heart, you know, oh. Grandma's Minuet, oh. and then another one about Madame Recamier. You had a speech contest yeah, sort of thing. During the morning, the 20 minute period, they always had exercise. Oh. And, and Marion Jones, Judge Jones's daughter, could whistle so beautifully. You don't hear much of that. Not and, much. Mm -mm. And she was on the program once. And then this will interest you. Every morning when we were all seated, we had exercises and we all sang and we sang religious songs and no one thought a thing about it. Well no, but by exercises Lead you mean kindly light and mm -hmm. was this and to develop your singing voices or just uh no, it just something was to do together. To open the day. Mm -hmm. And our our most of the time our Latin teacher would play the piano. Oh. And her, their home is still on Hamilton Street, next to the garage in the second block. But of course she's not there. <laughs> no. But I often, I always think of her when I pass. How, how many were in your um, graduating class? Do you remember about? I have the clipping, and if I'd known you were going to ask me that, I could tell you. Well, another time I might uh, find that out from you. And uh, Frank Kessney, Christian Kaiser, when Clarence King was salutatorium, oh. I got second vote for self, uh, valedictorian. 
So I must have been on the honor roll. There were eight on the I'm honor. surprised you weren't salutatorian then, because that's the well, second one. There, this will interest you. There was, um, there were sort of groups, classes, and there was the group, the girl that won it was in this university group, children from Langdon and professor's daughters. And so it wasn't all lovely girls, you know. It wasn't boys. based entirely on your grades then. Yes, but Helen Whitney, Professor Whitney's daughter, became a valedictorian. Clarence King was Professor King's son of the I think he was in the Department of Agriculture. I see. And we had commencement, this will interest you, in the state, second state capitol. Oh, you did? 1906. And what sort of commencement exercises? Wait, the wait, my dear, 1906. I graduated 1902, I told you. From I high made school. A mistake. Yeah, right. And that was the capital that burned in 1905, I think. Well, did you see it burn? Yes. Because you lived fairly close by. And we lived on Hamilton mm -hmm. Street. My f father ran up and helped carry out the books. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the North Wing wasn't destroyed so badly. Oh. <clears throat> well, that was big excitement in town, wasn't it? Yes. It Were was the streets paved by then, do you think? Burned. It started to burn from a gas jet, which oh. is interesting, mm -hmm. not wiring, you see. Mm -hmm. And they, um, the streets were in terrible condition, as I remember. <clears throat> we lived in the second block, third block on Hamilton, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> the road after rains was just a mud, just the heavy mud. There were some cars then, weren't there? Didn't they start yeah, the around? the first cars came during that period. Mm -hmm. It was a red car, and I can still remember not the name of the family, but I can still see the young man that ran it. <laughs> oh, it's pretty the exciting. The sidewalks were wooden mm -hmm. with cracks in between. Mm -hmm. You could look through. What, what stores were there on the square that you remember? Well, there was, um, there was a Jewish store uh, right uh, in the same location as the Y W. You no, know. mm -hmm. they used to have fire sales would from other cities and oh. you could get wonderful material for dolls clothing, mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. that. And and there was a, another a men's a haberdashy on uh, Main Street, Clauber. Clauber. How do you spell that? K L A U B E R. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there were a, a number of Jewish families in the Madison and they mingled with the German families. Mm -hmm. They may have come from Germany, some of them. Yes, mm -hmm. they were mm -hmm. very close. And there were hotels. The Belmont Hotel was there right, at that time. The wasn't Park it? Hotel was there. Oh. Mm -hmm. The legislators okay. had to stay somewhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, did you ever get up to the what I've heard it was called Big Bug Hill, where the big mansions are that they've uh, designated as landmarks now? Yes, it was <coughs> very much like it is now. Mm -hmm. and Did you know uh, anyone who lived there? A friend of mine, Helen Pierce, lived in the what they call the Pierce oh, House. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and a, a dear friend in high school, Lillian Fox, lived on the corner of Carroll and Langdon, but that beautiful house was torn down. Oh, mm -hmm. it, I remember it so well. It had a front stairway going to right and left. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, well, those were considered the rich then, people's of course, homes, Mabel I presume. Mabel Davidson, when oh. she, pardon me, when she, when her father became governor, they lived in the mansion. Later, the Davidsons lived next to the Lincoln School. Here. Oh, wow. that house had been mm -hmm. torn down. Those were considered the the wealthy people's homes, and the governor's yeah. mansion was yeah, there then was, too, wasn't <clears> it? At that time, we called them the four hundred. Very aloof, aristocratic. Yeah. It's um, it's changed a great deal. I think that people are more outgoing now and not so exclusive. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's true. It's a more democratic society now. But there might have been a bigger division between incomes then when... The well, the Vilas lived up there, you know. Oh, yes. He was a lumber baron. Mm -hmm. and, and the Fairchilds lived on Monona, where the state office building is, a red mansion, a red brick mansion. It was sort of on the slope, and there was a fence in the front. You could look down on uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. And then where the city county building is were three beautiful homes, stone or brick. You must have gone to school with the people, with all of the children from those families, or did they send them away to school? When you went no, to Central? Most, uh, most of them went to the university. But didn't they go to Central High School too? Oh, yes. So you really, you knew there, them? There was sort of an exclusive group, though. Mm -hmm. so. But as I said, Helen Whitney belonged to mm -hmm. that group. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, oh, one thing we had in high school, the girls had was a a girls' literary club called the Nautilus, and Miss McGovern was our leader and advisor to it. And I never thought that, and that, that was exclusive. But uh, two beautiful girls I had in high school um, told me they didn't get into it because their mother worked. Oh, really? I was oh. very surprised that that group had mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. ideas like that. Of course, it might have been because they didn't write as well as they should, too. Oh, but Oh, they were beautiful. And oh. ex-students, I had them in my German class. I see. Mm -hmm. And when I taught in high school. Well, I suppose there certainly was some of that uh, sort of thing in those days, too. I was wondering about um, clubs. You mentioned the, the uh, Nautilus literary club did you have a, a were there uh, other dramatic clubs and glee clubs and language clubs there there was a, a sorority formed during my high school years nan burge president burge's daughter belonged i remember uh, and the schools in the country were very against that mm -hmm. that this was a social was discontinued. Mm -hmm. But you probably you undoubtedly had glee clubs, didn't you? Choruses and uh, orchestra. No, I can't. No, I can't remember any glee club nor mm -hmm. orchestra work. You didn't have music then. No, I can't remember. And you that. do? Did you have art classes? Yes, we had an art teacher. Her studio was on the third floor. Oh. And uh, you must have been her prize pupil, weren't you? Well, I, I know I took art and enjoyed it, mm -hmm. but I didn't make any posters or anything like that. Do you remember if there was manual training for the boys? No, I have no shop so. or anything no. like that. So um, what proportion of the class would you say went on to school? Pardon me? What proportion of the class, um, of the high school graduating class, would plan to go on to college? Um, there was a commercial class. Oh, mm -hmm. wait, dear, I'm 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 going ahead because I taught in Central. And oh, that I see. Confuses mm -hmm. me a little. There, when I taught, that was I began to teach in 1914. Mm -hmm. Then there was a commercial class, a mm -hmm. very big one. Oh, with uh, typing and yes. And now uh, these two mm -hmm. lovely girls I told you. They were in circumstance that they couldn't go on to college. Mm -hmm. They had to go to work, and and they went into the commercial. I would assume that quite a few of the children did not they go on to school. rather looked down on the commercial students. Mm -hmm. There was a feeling. Um, one day I was on the bus late years, and a girl I'd had in the commercial department, I taught there later, and. Um, she said the girls that looked down on her going into commercial work now were glad for a clerkship in the stores. Oh. That's the way nice. life had changed. Mm -hmm. I can understand And there that. were lovely children to commercial work. Well, in your family, it was always assumed that you would go on to school, all the children? No. My brother started, 
went to high school and was a very good student, but my father thought he should learn a trade. Mm -hmm. And my cousin was in the drug business. He was well known all over Madison, Adolph Menges. They call him Ed, Ed Menges. How do you and spell that last name? M E N G E S. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they, that group, his group, began to have the first chains here. Oh. They had, at the t up to the Depression, they had four stores. What were they called? Menges Pharmacies. Menges Pharmacies. And so my, bro my father thought that my brother, unfortunately my father thought that. My brother was very disappointed. Oh. He loved going to high school and his teacher even came and talked to my father about it, mm -hmm. one of his teachers. And so he went into the drug business very young, and he was became vice president of the firm at the time of his death. He was vice president for about 35 years. And your other, the rest of your family? And my, my sister married in the, when she was about 24, she married a doctor who came, who was from Heartland, Wisconsin, Hartford, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and he went to Heidelberg, learned, got all his medical training, six years. And when he came to Madison, she had a beautiful contralto voice, and she was singing in a church choir, a quartet, and he fell in love with her. Had she gone on to school? No, and mm -hmm. so she married mm -hmm. quite young, mm -hmm. but he died young too, he was only 52. Mm -hmm. He was beloved doctor of the German community. He practiced uh, here in Madison. 35 then. years. Oh. And when he died, he was rentologist at St. Mary's mm -hmm. and also part did some of the x-ray work in Madison. Oh, good. Well, uh, so who else in your family went uh, to college besides you? Just I. You were the only one? Yes, a um, cousin it, it interceded for me mm -hmm. so I could go on. I was grateful to mm -hmm. him. And you always wanted to teach German, so... Yes. You, you, uh, I got good marks all during mm -hmm. high school. It was easy for mm -hmm. me. I could read it and write it and spell it. So you always planned to go on, and, uh, and you went right to University uh, yes. of Wisconsin then because it was you could live at home. Yes. And did you have a summer job, or how did how no, did you manage the I, tuition? And my things? brother helped me a lot, oh, uh -huh. but the tuition was very low, mm -hmm. and books weren't expensive. Yes, if you could live at home in those days, which I did when I went to college, yes. I lived in the town I went yes, to, to school in. It saves a lot, but nevertheless, if you're not bringing in income it's an expense to your family to no, be living at home. The young people have to work during the summers. Mm -hmm. I have a grand-grand-nephew. He said, Auntie, I'm going to paint houses this summer. Yes, that's a and good idea. That, for two years he worked in the chemistry plant. What did you do uh, summers? Did you ever go to summer school? No, I, I just helped at home mm -hmm. with the housework. Uh, one tragic thing in my life, my mother was a wonderful cook, but she never taught me to cook. Oh, <laughs> that so was probably I, the best thing that ever happened to you. She helped me prepare things, mm -hmm. vegetable and fowl, but meat, but she never taught me to cook. Well, um, did you have a garden in those days? Did you put up food, canning? My father, we had so little space, mm -hmm. but... Um, when we moved down to Livingston, he had a flower garden. He loved flowers. And I suppose that there were some um, farmers who came to town yes, so you could they buy came things. by wagon. Did they have a farmer's market then like they do now, or did no, they come no, every day? They, the, far, the market, farmer's market was started down here on Blount Street, and they're trying to revive it right now. What, what, when was that that it was started, do you know? It, it, it must have been about, let's see, maybe about 192 or so. Oh, my goodness. There was also a water tower opposite the um, 
First National in the middle there on East Washington, a water tower. And farmers, now that I remember, farmers came there from all over with oh. produce. Mm -hmm. um, did well, you do your shopping? Kind of primitive, as I remember. Oh, I suppose. Did you do your grocery shopping at a neighborhood uh, store? Yes. When we li lived on Hamilton, we went to a store which is there now, and, and I think lawyers are in it. It's the corner of Hamilton, Johnson, and Butler, and uh, it's white with blue awnings. The same little building the is there. The same building. Oh, isn't that nice? Um, we used to we used to see runaway horses in those days. Oh. I think that's interesting mm -hmm. to remember. Mm -hmm. Right Terr on. Terrifying to see it, you know. Normally people traveled in, in buggies with the horses. One day a woman came in with produce and her little girl in a buggy with a straw seat and a light buggy but four wheel and runaway horses came down Gorham Street and went on either side of her cart and turned it over. Mm. And uh, of course her horse was terrified. Mm, and yes. children, you know, are so cu curious. And I went into the grocery store to see her and I couldn't sleep for a day. She oh. had a big cut from a hoof on her oh. forehead and was bleeding. Little girl was hurt too. And scared. Uh -huh. um, the train was, I suppose, what people used to come, go from city to city, and the legislators came from Milwaukee and around on the train. That was the St. Paul and the Milwaukee Road. Mm -hmm. and, and otherwise, they'd have to drive into town with their, with yes. their carriages oh, or there wagons. Was good train service. Mm -hmm. But especially between here and Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop this now because I think we're just about at the end of the first half and we'll continue on the other side. Side two of the interview with Emma Glenns. Now will you tell me some of those interesting um, stories about how your family happened to come to Madison? My, my grandmother Glenn's, she, her name was Augusta Heil. Uh, she married my grandfather, who was not trained in hotel work, and she inhabited a hotel called Der Adler, A D L E R, Mitch Eagle. And he mismanaged it, he didn't know how to run it, and they lost it. And that's why they came to America for a new start. And uh, they came over 19. 18, pardon me, 1859, and the Kaiser family, they, pardon me, they came from Erbach im Odenwald, E-R-B-A-C-H, im, I am, Odenwald, O-D-E-N-W-A-L-B, in German, Erbach in the Olden Forest, oh. and it's near Heidelberg, mm -hmm. and, and my mother's family came from Frechen, F-R-E-C-H-E-N, near Cologne, to get a new star, too. Mm -hmm. And um, that was after, in Germany, you know, they had uh, insurrection 1848. My grandfather belonged to that, too. Mm -hmm. But of course the families went to different places. Uh, quite a few Germans had settled near Sauk City, so the Kaisers settled there. And my grandfather came ahead with the two older boys, Anton and Carl, and built a log cabin. And my grandmother came the next year with four or five children alone on a sailing boat oh, that took six m weeks. Oh, goodness. And with these little, the two, baby was nine months old. Hmm. And uh, she was a city woman. And it must have been terrific for her <laughs> to settle in a log cabin. Oh, yes, and they, she, was he farming she, there? She was, yes, they had a farm there. My grandfather didn't know anything about farming. And she wept so much they thought they'd have to send her back. They thought oh. she'd die of homesick. Hmm. But on the boat, 
they took the boat at Rotterdam, and uh, I think it was an English boat, English sailing vessel, and they told her that there was a cow on board for the babies. Oh. There was a Dutch couple with twins, and uh, I, I, I wish I remembered it better, <laughs> but the, my mother's little brother died on the boat, oh. and the sailors wouldn't bury it unless she'd give them whiskey. Oh. And she had no whiskey. She offered them a jug of wine. They didn't want that. So the Negro cook came up and offered to bury her baby. Oh. Think how sad. Oh, yes. Put it on a board, you know, and over. Mm -hmm. And so the, the sailor stole her wine, shook it, the jug at her as she left the boat. So she had rather sad oh, sailing. Yes. And then they settled. She probably was seasick the whole way, too. Yeah, they settled above Salk City, 10 miles. I went back with my mother after 40 years, and there was just a hole there left oh, with the mm -hmm. log cabin. Mm -hmm. But she loved it there. Your mother was my raised mother there. My mother loved it. She was a young girl mm -hmm, then, mm -hmm. and she said it was one of the happiest times in her life living in Wisconsin there in that log cabin. Oh, it's a beautiful area. The two older, then the war came, the Civil War, and the two older boys ran away. My grandfather got them back because Anton was so young. Mm -hmm. And then they ran away again. And Anton became a drummer boy later. He was in the cavalry. And, and Charles, the older one, was an orderly for some officer. But they met at Vicksburg. And they both got to be head of the GR in Milwaukee. Oh, they present. did. Got to be very old gentlemen. And my on my father's side, my grandfather came ahead and met them in Cincinnati, which is quite a German city, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, then they went to Chicago, and they opened a boarding house because my grandmother's such a wonderful cook. They had those hotels here. You know. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And then, the, I don't know why they left, but they went to Watertown, which of course was a German Very settlement. Very German. Mm -hmm. The Schurzes were there at the time, Karl Schurz. And they got to know the Schurzes. Later, Karl Schurz was a, uh, here at the university, was a speaker during one of the commencement. And my father went up and talked to him, and he remembered the Is family. Is that S-C-H-U? Uh, S-C-H-U-R-Z. Carl Schurz oh, yeah. mm -hmm. helped elect Lincoln, and uh, he also became senator from Missouri and ambassador, I think, to Spain. Mm -hmm. He is the outstanding German-American oh. in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. They, before World War I, they were going to erect a statue mm -hmm. towards the King Street side, opposite where the mm -hmm. Hulk mm -hmm. statue, but then the wars came and it mm -hmm. fell through, of course. Well, um, so this was your grandmother who was the, who ran the boarding house in, in, in Chicago? Yes, mm -hmm. the Lentz family. Mm -hmm. And then your then mother... Then they came to Watertown, oh. and then they moved about the time of the Civil War to Madison, and we've lived here ever since. since. And where did your mother meet your father? That I don't know. Maybe in the Turner Hall, I don't know. That. Oh, they lived in, they, both families lived in Madison. Yes. And, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and uh, your mother's family was, was what, Kaiser? Kaiser. Kaiser. Mm -hmm. Kaiser. And, it, uh, it means emperor, you know, oh, yes. in English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, the one that people call the names uh, called the Kaiser names during World War One. They really were saying emperor. Mm -hmm. He was emperor of Germ mm -hmm. Germany. And uh, how do you know how old your mother was when, when they were married and what you probably know what year it was? You see, I have a picture of my mother when she was 19, but she wasn't married then yet. They were young mm -hmm. in the, I say, the early 20s, maybe 24 or 5. Mm -hmm. So that would have been in about 18... 
1873. 1873. Uh -huh. and, and then they were married in St. Rafael is the oldest church in Madison, mm -hmm. and they were married New Year's Eve. In German, they call it Sylvester Abend. Oh. And they were married in the parsonage because my father was Lutheran. It was a mixed marriage, and my mother was mm -hmm. Catholic. And so we always celebrated, all through the years, New Year's Eve. And mm -hmm. my father would make a hot wine with burgundy and water and oranges, sliced oranges and cloves. Mm -hmm. It's something like a Norwegian like hot wine. Like the mulled wine. Mm -hmm. Called Glück. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the German called it Glühwein. Mm -hmm. G L O. Umlaut, mm -hmm. or two, an E, G L U E mm -hmm. H, Glue H, mm -hmm. and then Vine, W E I N. Mm -hmm. And how long did your uh, parents live? My, my father was 79, my mother 76. Oh, well, they were long they lived. They were yes. ill too long. Mm -hmm. Mother was ill eight months six months mm -hmm. and my father ill really old from old age and he grieves about mm -hmm. my mother's death. And, but he retired then from his, yes, his he, job? No, he in those days you could work and work. He, he was in the insurance department mm -hmm. and they had no pensions at that oh, time mm -hmm. and they the, the state paid him till his death which was lovely. Oh good. Mm -hmm. He died at home and uh, my mother, my mother had sarcoma in glands in her neck. And they, oh. they couldn't discover what it was mm -hmm. in those days, but she had severe pains. Now, what year was it that your father died? My father. You were a young woman by then. My father died about let's see, nineteen. I was teaching. On High school then to see. I, my mother, I know, and she died. She died 1926, oh. and he died the year after, mm -hmm. 27. Now he, uh, did any of your family go to the World War One? Your brothers, uh, they were all. Uh, they were old, too, too old. old. Mm -hmm. My brother-in-law was too mm -hmm. old, my brother. Did too. they have children who went to, to uh, my, fight? My brother and his wife had no children. My sister, who married Dr. Gilbert, had two, Gretchen and uh, Ralph. Mm -hmm. Gretchen died about seven years ago, and mm -hmm. Ralph became an ophthalmologist. And retired last year and is living in Hanover, Canada mm. with near a daughter. With, I see. He lives with his wife in a retirement home. Well, you started um, the university in 1902, did you say? Because you graduated? Yes, in, and I got my mm -hmm. B.A. in 1906. Then I taught a year and went back for German and, and art no, German and English, mm -hmm. pardon me. Mm -hmm. And I got my master's in 1908. Then I taught three years in Youngstown, Ohio. Oh. I went around like a music teacher teaching German in three schools. Mm -hmm. Because no Six, school seven, had enough eight classes. Grades. Mm -hmm. It was very unusual mm -hmm. in that era to teach German in the grades. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I would think but, so. But mm -hmm. there was a high school teacher from Germany. She was considered so excellent. Mm -hmm. When the boys, the boys and youngster all went east to school, to Harvard, oh. Dartmouth, and, and one of them once said that they could tell Miss Kerr had coached them in German. Oh. They were so good. Well, when you started the university, Mm -hmm. Were there quite a few girls there? Was it, uh, it was completely co-educational, wasn't it? I remember when I was a little girl, a girl in the neighborhood went to school and the neighbors all said, she's going to the university. It oh. was very unusual. Mm -hmm. But by the time I went, 
there were many girls. And it wasn't a, a separate, the separate female academy at that time, no, was it? it was co-education. Mm -hmm. I think, it seems to me, I read about 1890, they merged uh -huh. the two. And so you had classes right with uh, yeah. young men. And, and, uh, and we, we dressed as well as we could. Mm -hmm. uh, there were rich girls came from Milwaukee, and oh. at that time they even had fur coats. My that goodness. was very unusual, you know. But uh, we dressed as neatly and nicely as we could. Mm -hmm. And you wore probably, my, my mother was in school about that same time. And I, the pictures of her showed her with uh, the uh, tucked waists and uh, dark skirts down we to the wore ground. Very long skirts, mm -hmm. and and I had a skirt that even had brush braid around it. They were very, very hard on us, on our weight. Yes, tired us mm -hmm. so. Yes, and you were slim. And not I'm hygienic, sure. you know, <laughs> picking up all that mm -hmm, dirt. Mm -hmm. Did you? Did your uh, mother make your clothes, or did you, or were they bought? My sister learned to sew before she was married, oh. and uh, she sewed some for me. But we had a dressmaker mm -hmm. at different times, and um, a dressmaker made my commencement dress. Mrs. Abusilla Bagley was in my high school graduate oh. class, and she made her own dress. It was mm -hmm. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. We're all admiring it. Hmm. Um, the uh, what classes did you take when you went to the university? A basic course. I I took uh, English, history, history of the South. And because I was in the science department, I had to take advanced algebra and trigonometry, which was not my choice at no, all. It had nothing to do with your and, German major. And I major. was in a class with engineers, just another girl and I, and, and I got two conditions. And I would have to have taken a very difficult exams to write them off, so I took them over my sophomore year, and I had a very heavy program. Mm. But I took quite a lot of German, mm -hmm. and I always got good marks mm -hmm. on that. Oh yes, you didn't really need that science yeah, at I, all, did I, you? I, this might interest you. I am, because Professor Fuss was a friend of the family, I, instead of taking literature, which might have been more interesting, I took philology and graduated in philology. Oh, for heaven's sake. So I mm -hmm. had to take Anglo-Saxon, which is like a foreign language, mm -hmm. Old German, Middle High German, and read the literature of that oh, period, yeah. you know. Do you recall that you had a good time in university? Did you have a nice social life? And I, I uh, didn't belong to a sorority, but I had a very happy freshman year. I had I met a girl in Milwaukee whose father was state senator and knew my father as a student, mm -hmm. and, she, and she was a beautiful pianist. She even came over and played concerts two or three in the Capitol as a young girl, oh. a freshman. And so we were almost the same age, and every summer we exchanged. She'd come over two weeks, and I'd go over two weeks. And through her, I met other people, mm -hmm. her high school group. And uh, so two of the boys came to the university, and they took my chum and me around all my freshman year to oh. concerts and dances. And oh, we just had a. W I said I wouldn't have taken a Phi Beta Kappa for that year. <laughs> I had oh, such yeah. a good time. It's such a wonderful age too. And, and then almost the happiest year, mm -hmm. high school and uh, and the first year university. And then of course, then I had that heavy program, and uh, had to get down to mm -hmm. real I, work. I forgot to ask you when you were um, back in high school. If a lot of your social life was in the church, did you have church no, parties? And no, no, there was no none, social none at all. life at that oh, time. Uh -huh. I have some places I've heard that, maybe in the country, that they used to have their gatherings at the in, churches. In my grade years, uh, the uh, Turners and Metacor always had marvelous mask balls. Oh. And there was nothing going on, you know, like movies or TV. Mm -hmm. People came from the 
Yankee Hill mm -hmm. just to get, there was a balcony, you know. Oh, yes. And my father was very artistic and he used to get first prizes. He, he'd dress in, in historic costumes, oh, you know, yeah. like Charles the Great, beautiful crown he'd make and everything. Oh. And he, he often won the first prize. Oh, how exciting. And once oh, I was dressed, they dressed me when I was about 12, in, in a brocade dress with these big hoops, full, not hoops, mm. but I forgot what they call them, over the hips. Bustle. About the time of Pompadour in oh, France. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they, my hair, they, mother, my sister put my hair and powdered it and I had a fan and a mask, you know. Oh, yes. Walked on, I got the 11th prize. Oh, wonderful. I got an umbrella, it was bigger than I was. <laughs> but they had beautiful prizes, oh, uh -huh. furniture, dishes. Oh. So it was a really Lashware. big affair. It was. So what did your father win Remember when he got Willa first prize? Remember Willa wrote about oh. that and my Aunt Anaya. Oh, I don't remember that. I, I think did she wrote you? about a oh. ball uh -huh. like that, the city game. Well, did you, um, do you remember games that you played and uh, what sort of fun you had when you were a child? When I went to sh Milwaukee, they, we had, we played tennis, but we didn't play very well, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking fun. of earlier. Did you have sleigh rides and... Um, yes, I remember a, a winter sleigh ride to Middleton when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. But oh, dances! We danced two step and waltz, and at that time uh, at the high school, did you at have dances? university? I went to a, a party with one with these boys mm -hmm. in my chum to Easter Beach. Oh yeah, I've heard and of that. We took the steamer at Anglewood, <laughs> Anglewood Station. Oh. took the, all those steamers and that at that time during my high school years the Chautauqua was running oh yes too mm -hmm. and that was they had used to have wonderful artists come mm -hmm. famous bands and speakers and everyone in town went I everyone, suppose to hear the, the Chautauqua uh -huh. unless you had a buggy to mm -hmm. go one friend of mine um, Harlan Mossman said told me that he met his wife by uh, taking the steamer uh -huh. over to their church group, took the steamer over to Esther Beach, yeah. and he liked her, you know. Uh -huh. and, and, and met uh, her there. Well, he had seen her, uh -huh. but he got acquainted with her, and then he uh -huh. asked her out. So that's where I'd heard of Esther Beach. Well, um, were, there, were there lots of um, uh, sororities and fraternities then? There? Yes, they were very strong. Mm -hmm. and and uh, I always thought quite undemocratic. Mm -hmm. I used to wonder, you know, where everybody paid taxes towards the university. Why one, why these groups could be so strong and powerful and aloof, mm -hmm. it was so undemocratic. Mm -hmm. But you're, um, you lived in town, so you were a part of a different group and had friends. Well, my, my Kaiser, the Kaiser girls all became Pi Fi's, but oh. the oldest sister didn't continue school, mm -hmm. Miss Anakin. She wanted a different work. But the other girls, Stella, Helen, Esther, and Vera, were Pi Fi's. Oh, that's my daughter's a Pi Fi, she, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of closed. The house isn't there anymore. No, they sold that when they had started, everyone started moving off campus. Um, I wondered if, uh, you probably don't know since you had such good grades, but I wondered if it was hard to get into the university, if you had to, uh, if girls had any more trouble than boys, or was it just a matter of if you could afford to go, your I, family I wanted you to go. I any trouble at all. Probably not. I, no. I remember when we registered, we went into the old law building, and I still had my hair caught, and some fella said, look at the kindergarten. Oh, dear. <laughs> then Mabel Davidson told me, start and p pin your hair up. Emma. You, know, you look, were pretty young yes. to be going. Even. I was 19, though, yes. Pretty young to still have. When I you mean, started school, you must have been. Pretty old to have my hair down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now even men wear it down. <laughs> That's and so true. And yesterday was a beret. Oh, yes. Um, I wondered if you 
noticed any attitudes on the part of the professors that um, did they think you were a serious student and they they um, well yes in German they thought I was serious. many of the many of the girls who were going to school I assume were going to become teachers yes I had Professor Holfeld in Faust so difficult you know oh. he didn't even give us a, uh, an exam in it and uh, then I had all those philology classes, and I, of course, I love the German part of it, and uh, the history I enjoyed so much too. I had a, another course in English history, and I got through the math, you know. Mm -hmm. and the science. I met my high school when I was studying for the exam again. My high school math teacher passed and he said, Emma, you'd be a good student if you'd study. Oh, <laughs> I suppose the city was expanding at that time, that it had been growing out toward the university and yes, getting bigger. it was much smaller. The, all the German was in North Hall. Oh. And uh, I, I remembered something the other day that a friend thought was so interesting. Uh, on the grass in back of Main Hall, which is on the top of Bascom. The Bascom. Mm -hmm. A company came from England every year called the Ben Gree Players, and we just love that. And they perform Shakespeare out oh. of doors, and oh. we'd sit on the grass. And I asked someone, yes, they still remembered the name, hmm. but a girl younger than I. Uh, did you, was there, were there winter sports there on, on Muir Knoll? Did they ski and sled and, uh, um, and have a good time? Did they have snowball fights and things? I'm trying to think oh, what they did they, for fun. The, the um, at beginning of the year, the men had a rush, not, uh, not rushing for fraternities, but the sophomores against the freshmen. Oh. And it got so rough they had to stop it. They were injured. I saw them dragging one fellow by the legs and dragging him over the curb and his head striking. Hey. And it was very rough. Oh. And they put an end to that. And then there was the ROT, like the ROTC. Mm -hmm. We girls, uh, even a senior in high school, used to go out there and watch a drill in the old gym. And then they had military hops in the old gym, and the boys wear uniforms, and oh. that, those were lovely dances. Were there, and the proms uh, were always in the, in the red gym. Oh. Uh, were there athletics for girls at all? Did you, were you required yes. to take gym? Yes, in Lathrop Hall. Oh, yes, it was there. And see, what, what is the other one called? Uh, the other one near uh, Park Street. Well, there's Chadburn Hall. Chadburn. Mm -hmm. We went there for our gym. Well, that was a, a dormitory, though, wasn't it? Well, it part of it was a gymnasium. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh huh. And I remember there was a, still a wooden sidewalk leading to the door, oh. and I tripped and fell so terribly that I couldn't take part in the what did you uh, what did you wear for gym gymnastics we wore bloomers those big black shiny sort of satin uh, like knickers uh -huh. and uh, i i was going around a little with a freshman at that time when i was a freshman and here he comes and coaches our basketball team and i felt so embarrassed i didn't go back <laughs> Did you wear uh, midi blouses, yes. sort of? Yes. Oh. We're mm -hmm. all dressed, you know, mm -hmm. stockings. Mm -hmm. Black stockings, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, were there football games? Oh, yes, that was the era of the famous football teams with Cocombs, Arne Larum, King was a coach, mm -hmm. and they went to Yale for a, a, to play, no, mm -hmm. pardon me, Yes, I think it was Yale. And there was a whistle on the waterworks here, which, you know, the waterworks is just going to be changed in the condominium. Mm -hmm. And I was there for years and years. And there was a big whistle. Whenever there was a fire in Madison, that would blow. Oh. 
It was terrific. And that blew for five minutes because Yale only beat us by five points. Oh. <laughs> they thought that was so wonderful. It you know? was, yeah. Did they play at, at Breeze Terrace? There was their uh, a little football at, field the there. The first games I went to, there was a covered pavilion. Oh. Uh, a cover over mm -hmm. the roof, but mm -hmm. not a labyrinth, mm -hmm. too large a place. I remember. I think um, it, pardon me. I think it was on University Avenue. Oh, uh huh. They um, there was a skating rink that I remember from the first time when I was a little girl and came to Madison. There, down where the stadium is now, it was a big skating rink. Maybe it was in a different location, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure, of course, about that. But the campus was. Um, expanding and they had the ag uh, part of the ag school at that time as I recall. Yes, mm -hmm. I know of, I, Professor King was connected oh. with that. I knew the King family quite mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And Clarence was our salutatorium. They were a very nice family. Anna and, and then the, I just knew the two boys. And do you remember the um, uh, May days that yes, I heard about? when I was a freshman, they had dance on the upper campus, and we, the girls were in white, and we all wore big hats we made of tissue, not mm -hmm. the real delicate tissue paper. We could buy it, it was creased, kind of wrinkled. We made these big hats with a black crown like sunflowers. Oh. And we had to learn the, the different rhythms, mm -hmm. you know, I suppose in gym. Mm -hmm. And I should perhaps tell this, but when I passed, there were people standing along there near music hall. Somebody said, Emma, you've put me in such a dilemma. <laughs> They were just waiting to say that to you. Some fellow said it. I never knew who it was. Oh. That was too bad. While you were going around the maypole? <laughs> no, no, it was just rhythms. Oh, uh-huh. And then what was the commencement like? I remember my partner in high school commencement was Julia Tormy, the Tarmy family that mm -hmm. lived on West Washington Avenue, and they had Dr. Dr. Tarmy, her brother, and then later Weston, mm -hmm. different, quite a family of doctors, a lovely Irish family. And she was my partner, and she always also walked with me when I graduated from the university. Oh, how wonderful. She died quite, she taught English in Central. Oh, so you, when you were there were teaching when, German? When I taught German. Oh, so you were a very that, good friend of hers. Yes, and my history teacher was still there when I taught, and my English teacher, Miss Mosley. Oh. Well, was this a uh, ceremony outside at the university? It was in the Red Gym. Oh, uh-huh. Uh, but uh, when I got my master's degree, there were just two of us in German getting our our masters, and we wore white dresses. Mm -hmm. I always thought that was such a pity they didn't have the robes, you know, oh, with, uh -huh. the with the red mm -hmm. trimming. Did, uh -huh. did you did, did you wear the certain name did you wear it. the the uh, robes? We, at, no, we we wore just the white dresses. But when you graduated from um, the university first, when you got your bachelor's then, degree, then we wore the cap and gown and, and mortar board. Mm -hmm. And this may interest you. There was a custom when you were senior, you could wear your gown and cap the last semester. Oh. So many people walked around with caps and gowns. Just so like you knew they were seniors. Yeah, sounds like Oxford uh -huh. <laughs> in England or Cambridge. I didn't realize that. Well, that was a big achievement from you and for you, and then how you got a, the job right away. When you were out of university, you said you taught a year somewhere. Yes, but I always thought the university could have done better by me, oh. sending me to this little unfriendly town. And Where was that? I hate to tell you, it was called Plainfield, 
And later, when I worked in the highway on the maps, the boys always teased me because I worked on Washera, you know, I'd come to Washera, and I'd always groan then, oh, that's where I taught the first year. And then one day... It was Plainfield, Wisconsin. Yeah. Then one mm -hmm. day, one of the boys said, now you will hear something. And that's where that awful murderer lived. Oh, yes. Uh, I know. I know somebody who lives very so close I don't by like there. To, the people were... were did nothing for us teachers. There were and three, you taught just German? Three high then? school teachers. No, I had to teach English and history, mm -hmm. and, and it, it was an unhappy year. Mm -hmm. Nothing doing for us. And uh, we even gave a reception for the parents so we get acquainted. They did nothing mm -hmm. for us. A couple families were nice to me, had me for Thanksgiving. Oh. And, and my uh, father came up to see me while I was there. Yes, I suppose you couldn't get home too often when you were there. And some girls, you know, got into such lovely schools and had mm -hmm. such good times. Oh, I wasn't supposed to go around with any of the high school boys or anything. And I was and young. And the, uh, the first year of teaching is very hard anyway. I was I only 23, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you perhaps that was a good thing that you weren't too happy there because then you did come back the next year to get your master's degree. I got my master's the next year. Then I went to a big city in Ohio. Youngstown. But if you'd had a very advantageous place to teach, you might not have wanted to leave it to come back. Yeah, that's true too. So then uh, how did you get that job in uh, Ohio? They had, I told you there was a German teacher there that was known even mm -hmm. in the East. Mm -hmm. She was so ex such an expert teacher. And she was here getting a teacher. Oh, I see. And they sent me to her and she said, Sie können doch Deutsch sprechen, you wouldn't talk German. So I could, you know. Of course. And not as fluently as I can now. And so she, she uh, chose me. Mm -hmm. And I taught there three years. And then where did you go? Then I got into the high school here. Oh. I met a gentleman, he was an Englishman, and my people thought that I should try to get into state work. So I went to Forsey College and took typing, and stenotyping was just new then. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had an interview with this man. I, he knew I loved to teach, mm -hmm. and he, oh, he thought that was a pity I wasn't teaching. And, and so he said, I have a friend in the French department, a close friend. I'll see what he can do for you. He got in touch with Mr. Deal of the German department, and he chose me. They, well, there was an opening. Oh, marvelous. 1914. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I taught German four years, then the war came. And overnight, all of us lost our job. I, German was not very popular all of a sudden. There were five full-time teachers, and we had a beautiful department, about 350 children. Mm -hmm. And the young people, they wouldn't have quit, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was the older people that were so fanatic and, mm -hmm. and almost cruel. Yes, to any... Painted any, houses yeah. yellow. They painted the Americans, changed back, splashed it with yellow. Oh, really? They, they changed the name from German-American to the American exchange back. Oh, it was called German-American yeah. until and, that time. Oh, uh, people talk German on the street, you know. We gave us good talk. You couldn't mm -hmm. open your mouth. You couldn't say, mm -hmm. how do you do in German? Mm -hmm. it, it was almost persecution of the well, German people. Well, we did the same thing to the Japanese in, yeah. in World War Two. It uh, so yeah, uh, young generations don't didn't know that, but mm -hmm. it was a very difficult mm -hmm. time to, mm -hmm. to live through. When you were in Ohio, I was going to ask you, did you come back here for summers? Yes, I always was on home. the train, helping you know mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to be at home, I presume yeah, my, too. My sister. At that time, let's see, during World War, they lived, my brother-in-law bought the beautiful Alice place on Monona Drive. It's now De Pere House of Studies. Oh, yes. It has mm -hmm. 10 acres, and they lived there eight years till he died. He mm -hmm. died of cancer. Mm -hmm. And we always, you know, were welcome there. Oh. We always went there Sundays. Mm -hmm. 
picnics and Madison is a fairly pleasant place to be in the summertime. You yeah. would have been glad to come home. Uh, do you remember what kind of salary you got when you were first teaching? When I taught in a taught up north, I got I guess fifty dollars a month. I could hardly live on that job. Plainfield. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Ohio, mm -hmm. I got seventy dollars. Of course, that was a do the dollar had the dollar value. Oh but yes, But that was course. terrible. Mm -hmm. I. I paid over half, you know, for my room and board, mm -hmm. eked out a little for clothes. When I left, the superintendent said, you led a dog's life. Oh. Because mm. three schools every day mm -hmm. at $70. And how did you get around from school to school? I had to take a streetcar, oh. rain or shine, mm -hmm. to get to the schools that were miles apart. Mm -hmm. And, and the net, last year they gave me eighty dollars in two schools, but then I thought I'd quit. So I, well, my parents were getting old. Mm -hmm. I want to be with them. So it was ideal for you to be at um, teaching at Central and all yes. in one school. Then, and you did you stay with your parents then? Then they they were kind. We had a substitute principal. He was very kind, Mr. Roberts. And he kept us all. He, one was in, one was given a teaching job in history, two in French, and they asked me to work in the commercial department. And I had to work up a course in two weeks. Oh, com this commercial was when they correspondence. I didn't know a thing about it. And so I had to work up a course in two weeks while I finished the German. But I enjoyed it. I had lovely, in serious students, mm -hmm. big classes. Oh, uh -huh. But I had a mark, uh, maybe 125, 150 letters a night. Oh. And uh, my father thought it, it was too nervous. That was in typing? So I began mm -hmm. to, uh, to save up, and he helped me some. And I went to the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts and graduated oh. in 1922. Oh, in what? Uh, it in, was in just very hard two years, a very difficult in, school. In, in drawing or uh, painting or what? Oh, I took so many courses. I took uh, for, I, my diploma. I had seven, let's see, uh, 14 courses. Oh, all, in the all two art years. courses. Life drawing, crafts, design, dress design, so many. You loved it though, didn't you? Yeah, but well, you see, I was I was thirty then. I had to start all over mm -hmm. and the young people there were boys back from the war, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Pretty serious group because they all wanted to get jobs and get oh, yes. ahead. Mm -hmm. And well, I did have some pleasure. I, I love mu music and I went to opera every Monday night for two years, oh. but way up, you know, in mm -hmm. the valley. Mm -hmm. And I heard Chrysler twice, I saw Pavlova twice, oh. Vera Fokina, uh, oh, lovely soprano that just uh, Poncel. Oh. Rosa Punksell, and I'd go alone, Mrs. Mm -hmm. McCain. Mm -hmm. Just imagine coming home alone nowadays in Chicago on the elevator. Well, you were, um, you, did you live in a boarding house there? No, I lived in kind of a, uh, like the Y M. Oh. It was a mm -hmm. club called mm -hmm. the Eleanor mm -hmm. Club. Very well, primitive to very poor meals. And uh -huh. But you survived somehow. Yeah, I was a poor uh -huh. art student. When when you um, came back to teach in Madison, did you live at home? Well, it was difficult getting started. For a while, I taught crafts in the Wisconsin School of Music that Miss Bueller. Well, no, I was thinking before when you came to teach German at Central. Did you from Ohio? Did you live then with your parents? Oh yes. Uh -huh. They were so you were old. And you, uh, do you remember what you were paid then? In Ohio? No, here. Oh. It's, it's central. Uh, much better. So that's how I, you... I did work in the 
Board of, of um, the Commerce, when it was first started, I, I worked as secretarial work for a few months, and the first month he paid me thirty dollars, and <laughs> I didn't go back. Oh, uh -huh. my! But I told my brother he got as white as a sheet. He thought it was terrible. Mm. Oh, what women used to be paid was just awful. Oh, thirty. Dollars. And and then of course then I got into high school and I. I was paid $150 a month. Oh, that, that was, was good. Nice. And then that's how you were able to save money then, yes. living at home and to go on to the uh -huh. Chicago school. Yes. So when you graduated, then you came back to Madison again. Yes. And then it was, I had to look for a job, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And as I told you, I was with Miss Bueller and my cousin Helen tried to help me. I taught crafts there for a few months. Then one day my father was on the streetcar with a man he knew in the Board of Health, State Board of Health, and they were looking for an artist. So I had an interview and I got it for half days mm -hmm. and worked into it then, mm -hmm. into a full-time job. And um, I did the charts for conventions and covers for magazine and I worked quite a lot with the engineers and drafting. Mm. They had an engineering mm -hmm. department there, you know, mm -hmm. health. So I did quite a lot of drafting. And I worked there 13 years. And Madison had grown quite a bit by this time to have a, yes. and the state government had grown, and so it was quite different than when you were a little girl. It probably had a population at that time that was uh, 19, in the 19, early 1920s. After the Probably war. Probably a population mm -hmm. of about 150,000. Oh, uh -huh. And s new stores opened. The old city hall was torn oh, so down. Wasn't it only about 50,000 then, as I recall? Because when we came Maybe in... Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, you know, we I came don't. in 1940. And it was only about eighty thousand then. Know. So, but even fifty thousand was a big. J mm -hmm. I'm not good about the population, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but um, still, all the shopping was around the square. The beautiful old post office was torn down, and Manchester's was built, oh. and the city hall also was a very interesting old building. Mm -hmm. But it looked a little dilapidated. It had these lovely round windows. And that was still here in 1942, I remember that, before um, Woolworths. Yeah. And did you go to the um, opera house here? And the, the opera house was a park, and my brother was in the Menges Pharmacy downtown where 30 is now, and everybody said, meet me at Menges, oh. <laughs> and we'd meet friends there. Uh -huh. And it might be interesting to you, the Menges, you know, were a prescription pharmacy, but they also, there was no store that had beautiful uh, leather goods and mm. things, scissors and things like that you could buy at a, at a store like Manchester's. Mm -hmm. And they carried a line of that and a very fine line of candies, mm. bonbons. There was a firm here that made marvelous chocolates. Keeley's, Keeley's, bittersweets. Oh yes, and they they were Don't, famous. Isn't that still out on East Washington I somewhere? I think they still make them. Otto's candies. I ought to I buy think. some just just see just if for just old times' sake. I'm then, sure it's not as good these days. Yeah. Well, um, the streets were paved, of course, by this time, and uh, the new capital had been built, and it was quite a different city then, I presume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I saw the uh, statue before it was hoisted up, and oh. it had enormous feet, about a yard long. Miss Forward? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, Forward. Uh, well, well, so uh, you've certainly enjoyed being in Madison, and... Um, I think it could be the most beautiful city in the United States for its location, mm -hmm. but the early settlers had no vision. They built on this narrow isthmus, mm -hmm. and that's why the houses are all so close. Mm -hmm. And I also think they made a big mistake not to make a boulevard of State Street. End of the interview with Miss Emma Glenns.